really misjudged it. He stood off a long, long way away from the big, massive oxer spread, and you just can't afford to do that when you've got such a big spread going uphill, you need to run him right to the bottom of it and give him every chance to get over that spread. Unfortunately for Derek, he saw a long stride and kicked off far too far away from that fence. As we go back to Barry Roycroft and last tango coming over the Snowy River Leap, and that wouldn't have been worrying Barry much at all. He knows how to cope with those obstacles. And making the turn to the water complex of Dead Man's Pass, it'll be interesting to see which side Barry is going to go. And he's coming on the right-hand side, the quicker route, puts in the stride on top, a stride in the water where he had more room out towards the right-hand side of the rails, quickly out of the water up the bank and away towards the double brush opposite. Andy Orchard taking the longer option at the water. And my word, how lucky it was that Neil Air built such a wide obstacle at that third element, because Mandy very nearly missed it. Just hung on to the right rein in time to get him there. And now leaves a leg coming up the bank, out of the water, giving the horse a pat. She knows he got him out of a lot of trouble coming to the big brush oxer. Jumps that very easily. It's Christoph Wagner from Germany, the first member of the German team. Clear so far and making the Snowy River Leap look very easy. Now then, he's got to attack this. Very nice, very good indeed. I think the secret of this water complex is going to be for the riders to attack it. Although he too lost his back legs, hopping up the bank, but going on now safely to the brush oxer. Mandy with the whip out over the suspended bridge. Yes, Venture Busby just starting to look a little tired. Graham of course, Hill. this horse is 15 years old, and this will probably be his last major championship. And there's Barry Roycroft sprinting for the finish, and that's a great start for Australia. That's the type of start we do. We don't think there's any jumping penalties, and he would be over the time allowed, but not by all that much. Mondigo and Jacques Dubois for France. Oh, Mandy Orchard, very awkwardly over the big spread. And Venture Busby really starting to show the pinch now. It's a long, long way. This horse with Mandy was fourth individually in the European Championships last year. But Mandy really struggling now. She comes to the Brewery Drays. Now, this long pull up the Gawler Hill, 400 feet, I think, taking its toll on Venture Busby. 15 years old. And I don't think he's going to jump it. Oh, he does. He tries. What a great effort. Romandian now will have to take it very quietly if she's going to get Venture Busby home. Armin Bigo, the oldest competitor in this competition, at 52. But certainly, he's 52 years. He hasn't lost any of his dash. Oh, Mandy almost in terrible trouble at the first part of the Jubilee 150. Yes, Spencer Busby definitely came to her rescue there. I don't think she knew much about that. Sunhill Cloud and Di Schaefer for Australia. Just starting. Over the first and second, Di Schaefer from South Australia, who's ridden this course many times. Christoph Wagner 
for Germany. The 12 year old Bay Gelding, Philip. Now safely over the bus stop and the Bentley gates, heading down towards Early Gawler, taking a different route. Jumps in over the fallen log and is going out over the road closed. Oh, there's a fall and a half. Christoph Wagner, I think just showing a little bit of his inexperience there, because that suspended bridge, one of the easier fences on the course, and Marie Trailer struggling to get her reins back. Here we go, heading for Dead Man's Park. Now going to attack this water fence. Oh, she was in all sorts of bother. Got out of that well, Mark. Ooh. Just in time, brought his head up. Literally just in time to jump that third element. Anne-Marie, we're very pleased to have got away with that. And I think these riders are now starting to think that that right-hand element and the right-hand side of it is the right way to jump this water complex. Christoph Wagner into the Gawler Gully Elves. Again, playing it safe. When riders have had a problem or a fall like Christoph has had, their heart goes out of the job a little bit, and all they're intent on then is just getting round and completing the course. I'm on, having trouble getting under the tree. Exactly. He's almost stuck in it. Look, barging his way through up onto the bank. Save as much time as possible towards the garden wall fence. Pillars number 11, Australia. Pillars right. I'm having slight navigational problems at this silo fence. He's safely on his way again now. My Ross has a think about the second element of the Snowy River drop. Going for the short course. <laughs> Lorna showing all of her experience there. Of course, she will have talked to Chrissy Strawn, and Chrissy will have told her about the hazards of going on the left-hand side. Trudy Boyce and Mossman from New Zealand. Lorna will have had her heart in her mouth as she came off those banks. The back rail of that parallel bar, the third element, must have looked an awful long way away, but Myros just makes it. Just in time. Coming towards the end of the course. And still clear, only visibly tiring. And we're going the long way at the Gawla Gully Elves. Taylor and just in time jumps the last and comes to the finish she'll be thrilled with that <laughs> she helped the British young riders to a team gold in the European Championships last year and now she'll be thrilled to have jumped a clear round at this her first World Championships Trudy Boyce, the second member of the New Zealand team. And of course, the New Zealanders will be really looking for Trudy to jump a clear round after the disasters early on of Merrin Hay. And she's clear through that. Getting plenty of support from the local crowd uh, at the river jump, really appreciating the skill of both horse and rider.
Benton's way, Gillian Rolton, just about to go into the starting box. All the best to you. Oh, could be in trouble. Mark was in all sorts of bother, did really well to get out of that. Yes, Mossman was a good horse to her there. Benton's way, Jill Rolton on course. Into the Jubilee 150. Now into the zero. Got in a little bit short. Measure the stride, safely out. No problem for My Ross and Lorna Clark. Gillian Rolton. Drops down nicely. Into the very difficult water jump. Oh, she's in trouble. I think Gillian will kick herself there. She just fell forward onto the horse's neck. And really didn't give him a lot of chance to jump that third element of the water jump. She'll be disappointed having collected those funded penalties there in the water. Taking the short course. Oh, she's in terrible trouble. Bounce down, the horse is down, both are quite okay. Completely missed the bounce. That's going to be bad news for the American team because Derek de Grouchier was also in trouble. Karen had no chance at all of staying there. Judy Thompson and Percio for Australia. Competing as an individual. Equal 13th after the dressage with 59.6 penalty points. Judy Thompson comes to Queensland. He was riding Percio. Had a very good dressage too. Melanie O'Brien onto the state banks, over the elephant trap, crossed the top of the second bank, and got in close, but got out of it nicely. My word, Clarence was clever there. Got Melanie out of all sorts of trouble. And the next competitor coming into view. Dives and flying colours at the early goal offence. This a very young and inexperienced horse to be at a World Championships. It's a nasty fall there, Mark. Yes, it looks as though Judy Thompson hit her head on the rail of the third element. But these crash hats, especially designed to protect riders from that sort of incident. Straight into the rail, a very, very nasty fall. And here we have Melanie O'Brien and Clarence at the early goal offence. Clarence still keeping going and clear so far. Just James having a good look at the Snowy River drop, but safely on his way. Andrew just winding the lucky band up a bit as he comes to the water. Well, I know Andrew would have been having lots of thoughts and memories rushing through his mind as he came through that complex last year as he jumped into the water on Just James in the same position, although a slightly different obstacle. The horse jumped very boldly and Andrew had a fall and a ducking there last year, so he'll be pleased to be going away from there today, still with dry pants. This is in replay, Andrew Hoy going through the water. Leaves the back leg on the third element. 
but Abner does well to keep his weight out of the saddle to give just James a chance to pull his leg off the fence. The big open water. Just James has a look at that. Andrew will be a little bit worried, and I think the way that Just James has jumped the last two or three fences, he'd be sensible now to be a little bit cautious at this State Bank complex. He's not too. Yes, and he's going the long way. I think that's very sensible. Just, just James, a comparatively inexperienced horse. Oh, and Andrew caught napping there. He thought James was going to go, and he just didn't. And Friedrich Nagel at the Jubilee fence. Still getting that bit of vocal encouragement. Meanwhile, we watch Stuart come and he's attacking straight onto the state banks and jumping very nicely off them too. Goes two strides and beautifully out over the spread on the far side. Won't be pleased with that. Well, I think Ian what? has to admit <laughs> that he's had a fall. And how very unlucky. How unlucky can you be? Jumps the parallel well and then just loses his hind legs after the fence. Yes, he tried everything not to collect those 60 penalties, didn't he, Marcus? You're well aware if you can stay. Off the ground, it is possible, although already his foot has touched the ground. And now the third member of the New Zealand team, many people's favourite, to take an individual medal at these championships, Tinks Pottinger and Volunteer. Of course, Tinks won the Gordon 3 event here last year, was first and second, in the New Zealand final trial in Christchurch last year. And always goes a great gallop. I'm very pleased to welcome to the Channel 9 commentary box, of course, a man who designed this course, Neil Neil Neil, 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 welcome to the programme, and you must be pleased with the way the course has come up. Well, very pleased indeed, I am. Some of these jumps uh, are certainly taking their toll today, but obviously the slippery conditions uh, underfoot is making it difficult for both horse and rider. The slippery conditions are making quite a difference and virtually uh, neutralizing several of the difficult options at the end of the course, particularly the silo banks and the Gala Gully Ls. Those are really almost no jumps at this point. They're just walk walking through them. The slippery going has made those big spreads uh, involved in both of those jumps uh, really uh, not an option. You, how long did it take you to actually design the, the actual jumps? Well, I started thinking about it about 12 months ago when I came out here at the time of last year's uh, Gawler three-day event, and I've been working on it uh, off and on uh, since then. And, of course, you did design the course at Los Angeles. Uh, is there any comparison between the two courses here at Gawler and Los Angeles? I think this is a more difficult course and made all the more difficult by the slippery conditions underfoot. And, of course, the terrain here is enormously different than what it was in Los Angeles where we were dealing with a very flat piece of terrain. The greatest difference in elevation and the highest point and the lowest point was six and a half meters and here it's 120. So you're talking about hilly country here and flat country there and that makes for a different kind of course for sure. Now what sort of things do you sort of uh, look at when designing a course? Uh, you sort of sit down, and it must take months and months of planning. Well, it does. Uh, there are certain tests that you like to ask the horse. You like to ask them to jump verticals and spreads and go in and out of water and off banks and through bullfinches and combinations with the require the horse to extend or contract and uh, turn sharply between elements and the like. And you try to incorporate these in obstacles that uh, hopefully fit well in the frame where they're uh, uh, designed to be built. And, uh, many other considerations, but there's a lot to think about, and uh, you don't think of it all at once. You work over a course, you come up with an initial plan, and then I think it's fair to say that before you finish, you probably change as many as 50% of the obstacles before you end up with the uh, final version. Neil, you've taken a lot of trouble, trouble all around this corner course, 
with the footing. We see a lot of the horses on these wood chips. I actually wish that I had had more experience with these uh, wood chips which are manufactured here in Australia. And if I'd known how well they were going to work out, I think I would have put more of them around the course, particularly up at the big uh, Ox of My Sea, for unless I'm mistaken, there have been two bad slides and falls today. I haven't uh, been able to see it all on television. My impression is that there are several obstacles that uh, uh, could have benefited by the wood chips. We have been taking it out steadily to obstacle locations all day long in an uh, effort to uh, improve the footing. The sun is bright now, and the footing is really pretty fair right now. Yes, Ian Stark and Oxford Blue safely on their way through the early Gawler fence. Our special guest, of course, with us is uh, the course designer here at Gawler, Neil Ayer. And uh, Neil, it's a, a marvellous moment for Adelaide. Uh, your impressions of, of the Gawler circuit? Well, I like the territory around here. You're talking about the uh, cross-country course we're looking at, my yes. impressions of it. Well, it's a spectacular course with lots of hills and lots of terrain to uh, design into. It's a, uh, I think, the most interesting piece of terrain that I've ever had an opportunity to uh, put a course on. It was a challenge, but it seems to have uh, worked out quite well. There have been the problems, but there always are in the sport, and so far I think we're uh, right on schedule. Supersonic, a comparatively inexperienced horse. Did his first advanced street event at Melbourne last year. But how well he's going today. Oh, brilliant. That was really, really superb, Mark. Did that beautifully. Tinks Pottinger has been held up by the delay, just walking the horse around, waiting for the all clear to recommence the course. I suspect that Andrew might well have been the cause of the hold-up at one of the earlier fences because Oxford Blue has now overtaken him and got in front of him. Tinks Pottinger just taking off once more on the cross country. Very important round for New Zealand and Tinks. The winner here last year and up to this point has really gone superbly. The horse still full of running, obviously superbly fit. Tinks has got every chance of going into the lead here. Going as fast as anybody we've seen over this latter part of the course. What a great triumph it would be for Tinks if she could take the lead. In the absence of Mark Todd in New Zealand, while Mark has been in Europe, Tinks has really won everything there has been to win in New Zealand over the last couple of years. But, oh, she must be careful there. As Volunteer slips on the side of that bank, and now only one fence to go. 30 seconds. End of the box. And here comes Tink, still full of running, into the final fence, the wine barrels. Jumps it superbly now, sprints for the finish. And that's an excellent round for Tink's Pottinger and the New Zealand team. And that will certainly put the New Zealand team into the lead. Trudy Boyce already leading, and now Tink's probably going to take over that number one spot. So New Zealand, we think, at this stage, holding the first two places. And there's the third member of the United States team, Karen Lendy with Lutin. And here's uh, Scott Keach, and Trade Commissioner, through the start, over the first fence. A very important round for Scott Keach. Colin Irving, nicely through the state banks. Hit it beautifully. And doesn't the crowd here love that green and gold colours of Australia, Mark? Especially when they go as well as that. <laughs> and it's surprising how the confidence of a rider 
can transfer itself down those reins to really give the horse that little bit extra that's needed. He's hitting out the right way. The trade commissioner, very clever there, just slides out over that third element. Scott just lost an iron as he came out of the water, but he's got his pedals back now and going on back to the big brush oxen. Oh, and brilliantly over that. Australian cross-country riding at its very best. Riding for Australia, riding is hard at this cross-country international event. Let's have a look at Scott Keats go through Dead Man's Pass once more. It certainly was a great bit of uh, work by the horse there, Graham. certainly was. Short of pace there. Oh, he's in terrible trouble. Landed short. And Scotty's down. Let's hope Trade Commissioner's OK. Scotty really having a good look at the horse. Here he comes. He just daps in a quick one. Short of pace, the commissioner goes high in an effort to make that big ditch. Just fails, and Scott has got no choice but to roll off. He'll be really disappointed now. Coming down the hill towards the silo bank and the big parallel bars. Haven't seen a competitor as yet take the silo drop. Obviously, everybody's considered it's a little bit difficult. And as I speak, no, he almost appears though he was going to take it. Taking the short approach up onto the big bank and jumps out over the parallel. Great commissioner striding along nicely. Scott sets him up. Jumps it beautifully. What a good prospect he's going to be for the future. These World Championships will give him invaluable experience and make him a competitor to be feared by all at the Olympic Games in two years' time. Now just waiting to start the reigning European champion, Virginia Leng on Priceless. Very disappointed with her dressage yesterday, although she's individually starting in sixth place after the dressage. Oh, loses her reins and pays the penalty. Virginia Lang and Priceless, sixth after dressage, running for Great Britain. Oh! Well, what a surprise. Priceless banks the first fence, nearly ejects Ginny out of the saddle. Priceless not happy, bucking and kicking and swishing his tail. A little bit like he did in the dressage yesterday. Banks it and nearly ejects Ginny out of the plate. Struggling to get her knitting back. Virginia just need to settle him down a little bit. Makes it looks so easy. She turns to the water. Let's see a quick one. And again. Oh, yes. Very neat. Mark Todd just preparing for his round, a very important round for New Zealand and Mark Todd. New Zealand looking pretty good at the moment with two horses home with good scores. Ginny Lang and Priceless at the banks. Oh, yes. Very neatly. And Ginny on her way now up the long gaula here. Although Charisma here really motoring on and pulling for his head. And Mark will be worried here about the slippery going. He won't want to go too fast. 
No, he's got him anchored. Playing safe. Calm, collected. Charisma can do that all day long. How Mark would love to add this world title to the Olympic one he already has. Of course, the one place he's been very